awfully hard to narrow down. Exciting, interesting, exuberant. I can go on. Sort of grey blue and diverse. European. In three words, London is great. <laughs> it's better best I can do on, on the spot. I would choose multicultural, uh, discovery, and colourful. Almost here. It's about, well, about a year and ten months, maybe. I've lived in London for eight years. Five. I've born and bred in London, um, in the part of London, North London, called Islington. Um, I was raised through the age of 20, 21 when I got married and moved out to the suburbs. Um, so, yeah, so I'm a uh, a Londoner through and through, and I'm now 63 and a half years old, so I've been around for some time. I'm originally from Ghana in West Africa, yeah, and I came over to study, so and then I got stuck. <laughs> I'm from Baltimore. Initially it was work because I went to university um, in the Midlands, so in the mid yeah, Midlands, I think that's self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so then I came here for a job, so I came here to do PR and I wanted to get away from like the provincial and like London was like the gateway to opportunities and fun times. <laughs> One of the first turning points is when people ask you for directions and you're like, oh yeah, I, I know where to point you and I'm like, yes, I'm local because I know where to point you. And then someone made a comment and said, oh my gosh, like you really, you're like a South Londoner. So then already it's like they're breaking it down even more because different areas of London, are, yeah, people are very different and the lingo and the way they speak and stuff. So to be identified as a South Londoner, because I spent a lot of time in South London. That was like, oh, okay, so maybe I am, I am in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> part of the cool kids. I can't, I, I mean, I've, I have this kind of um, almost fantasy of getting on the, you know, the, tour, the city tour bus, you know, like hop on, hop off. And I've never even done like a river cruise thing. I'm like, oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, I'll do that next weekend. And then I just never get around to it. Um, I think for me, just coming from Africa, I think it has taught me that I can, I can be myself, and I can, um, I can still kind of practice my culture and like aspects of my African or Ghanaian national identity. So I can get Ghanaian food, and I can go to areas of London where there are just Ghanaians. And it, I mean, I understand like in some ways it's not great for integration, but also in some ways for. A lot of people who live in the diaspora who are desperately trying to hold on to what's left of their culture, those kind of places are like really important and they kind of rejuvenate you in a way. It's kind of cool, it's nice. But it's a wonderful place, it's amazing. So much to kind of discover and to see and yeah, it's great. It smells like pee. I still don't feel like a local because I've been on so many visas and now my visa is still dependent on my husband. So it's where I live. Like if I thought if I like oh I'm going home, I would say I'm going back to London. But I don't feel like I'm really part of it now because of that situation, which is kind of sad because you know. This is where I like work, and this is where I live, and this is where I have my friends. But yeah, there's there's definitely still like a barrier there. The people in South London they either bike or they drive, so I'm somewhere in the middle because I walk and take the tube. Still, I think actually 
I'd be I'd feel like more of a Londoner if I biked. My husband's from here, so I don't know. <laughs> it all depend on sort of how things work out with both of us, I guess both of our jobs. But I I I can't say. You might go back to the States. <laughs> Yeah, I love London. I mean, as I say, uh, I was I used to spend a lot of my youth in London yeah, when I was in my teens, coming to, to London, seeing people like Jimi Hendrix and in my time and before he made made it big. Um, so, because I was I lived right on the perimeters of of it. Isling, I don't know if you know where Islington is, but it's quite a, a busy busy area now. I mean, it wasn't like that when I was a teen. So we had to wander into the Soho. In, into the into the central part of the city to have our fun. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I've got lots and lots of fond memories of, of London, and uh, it took me a long, long time to get used to living out in the suburbs when I moved there because, like most cities, it's too expensive to live in the city. So you have to move out a little bit, and that's what we had to do. Is it, it really, uh, it, you know, it wasn't uh, wasn't a good time for me because I just missed it so much, but. I'm used to it now, I've seen. So for 28 years I've been a licensed taxi driver and also teaching people the knowledge. It's called the knowledge if you're not aware of what that is. Uh, we have to learn something in the region of 15,000 street and road names. And if you place a point of interest on each road, that's the sort of volume of uh, training a London taxi driver has to go through. I can honestly say, hand on heart, for me, it's one of the best moves I've ever made. I have to say to you, I would never do this job anywhere else in this country or in the world. I would see taxi driving in some cities, in fact most cities, the general public see that as probably the, the last line of a job. Okay. Um, whereas the London taxi driver is completely different. Nobody spends three, four years of their life learning all these streets and roads uh, for, for nothing in return and um, so that's that's why I'm a, I'm a taxi driver in London and no I wouldn't even think about doing that job this job anywhere else I think for me it was when I started making friends here that I really felt at home because originally when I arrived I arrived just after I graduated from university and back then I just didn't know anyone at all. I felt very lost and alone in a new city. After a while you meet new people, start making friends and then you start feeling at home. public get into a taxi wherever, especially if it's their local, they will say I want to go to the local shop or stores, they know that. Tourists uh, and the local people have different purposes because f from the point of view that the, the tourists are all, uh, they're tourists, they want to be going to the places of interest, they want you to try and explain to them what, what, what goes on in these places. Well, work for one thing. I mean, there's, there's lots of potential to find uh, an, uh, an income in, in London, there's plenty of places to work. Uh, from a local point of view, you, you can rest, rest assured that you, you, nine times out of ten you'll be able to get some sort of income. London's a huge city and just travelling around is really inconvenient at times. Because I used to live in Bristol, which is a much smaller city, you can walk from one side to the other pretty quickly in a matter of hours. Here, it's about 
The tube is great, so are the buses, but just sometimes late at night, you want to get home, none of them are working. What do you do? You pay for a cab, expensive, and walk very long distance. The depth of London is just a bit overwhelming at times, but that's the main thing for me. Other than that, I love it. So much to see and do. It's a big city. Uh, and plus, from, from the entertainment point of view, it's nice and local for them to visit and see shows. I mean, we have something in the region of, I can't quote me on it too much, but something in around about 85 theatres in London. So there's plenty of places, then, you know, different types of venues that show different types of shows, from opera and to the, the, the comedy sketches and, and things like that, and serious stuff. I get, a, get a kick out of seeing people enjoying themselves, you know, uh, around the theatres and the, the restaurants and the clubs and the nightlife. So I, I quite enjoy especially working at nights. That's the bit I like to see. Is your mouth a little weak? You? When you open up to speak Are you smiling? Don't change your when they decide to come to London, you know, a city of this size, um, uh, the thing is they don't realise, I believe, uh, that, that how fast it runs here. Um, and uh, they, it's quite a shock, especially if you're in a little sleepy village somewhere and you've lived all your life in there, and you come to the city like London. I mean, I notice it when I go to other places in, in, in England, uh, how easy and laid back it all is. Um, so I believe it's quite a tough, tough thing for them to do when they come here. They don't really realise how fast it, it moves and they get a bit, bit, bit sort of uh, shocked by it all. And probably a lot of them then return back to where they come from. Tourism is about going to a new place and exploring it. And as long as you're enjoying yourself, you're seeing something new, I can't complain with that. So yeah, I mean, the big difference is it's the difference between someone who feels at home and someone who's interested in making a new one. Sometimes I feel like, oh, they're a necessary evil. Because it's great for the economy and it's also great because, you know, when sometimes when I go down to Green Park and you know you have the tourists like going down to Buckingham Palace, I think it forces you to look where well, it forces me to look at London in a different way, which is which I appreciate actually. I'm like, oh wow, I walk past it all the time, but you know, it makes me sort of stand and sort of admire it from their eyes as well, which is kind of great. But yeah, I don't go to Oxford Street because of that. It's just like you can't walk past zero so miles like an hour. 9:30 in the morning on the weekdays, then it's really nice. I don't hate tourists. I just hate the attitudes so I don't have. As long yeah. as they're not ahead of me on the pavement, I don't mind. <laughs> But sometimes when you're in a rush, then you it's really annoying. yeah, then you get a bit frustrated. But then you have to calm down and think. Well, if I go anywhere else, I'm a tourist. So, How often do you visit the touristy spots? Like never. never. <laughs> well, I have a slightly negative view towards certain tourists, just because when I'm walking down the street, especially if it's an area I'm used to, and you see all the groups of people standing still taking pictures, it really slows things down. They walk around with their maps in their hand and uh, they've got their trainers on or sneakers as you probably call them in your country uh, to help along with walking. Um, so uh, generally you can, you can, from experience, you can determine which is a tourist and what, especially when they ask you the question of where they want to go and you can see straight away in their face that they're they're not sure if they're asking the right question or not.
I was in that situation where I was the lead cab and uh, there was about six cabs behind me with their for hire. And I get pulled over, get held by a public, uh, by somebody, and um, female. And I just, before I could say anything, where did you want to go? She actually got into a taxi, took a selfie, and got out the other side. Uh, and this all happened in very quick, you know, emotions. And um, I said, what's that all? She said, just want to know, to let people know that I've been in a London taxi. Of course, then, I'm now at the back of the queue. Because all the taxis think I picked a fare up and they've got him, which was quite annoying. But, um, yeah, that's uh, that's one of the uh, situations. Don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with tourists in general. We've all been a tourist at some point in a new city, a new place. Like me, they, they should click into the fact that, uh, you know, I'm a tourist, you're a tourist. And uh, we have to think that uh, we have to give space. Look, I'm a taxi driver in central London. When I go outside of there, I'm as lost as everybody else. <laughs>